okay uh, we have covered um, second john up to verse 11 and we just have a couple of verses left in second john uh, that would be verses 12 and 13 uh, so let's you know just wrap up that um, so in this final portion uh, John is saying, I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. Um, so this is a common uh, way to conclude letters. Uh, this is how it was done in those days, um, where generally the person who is writing would express uh, the wish that you know that he could have preferred to communicate face to face rather than you know send a letter so a desire is generally expressed at the end of a letter or at the end of a friendly informal letter a desire is generally expressed saying i wish i could actually be over there rather than just sending this letter to you okay so uh, it's a kind of formality that was followed but over here we see john adding something extra uh, he says um I, I, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. Now, this is a, a additional wording that he brings in. It's not part of your traditional format. So he is talking about how uh, if he comes over there, then he'll be able to see with his own eyes how they are walking in the truth. And, uh, you know, um, that would encourage him uh, and also he would be able to interact with them. He would maybe be able to strengthen them further in the faith. Uh, so um, in, in that sense, uh, he says, our joy would be complete if we could do that. And then he concludes by saying, uh, the children of your sister who is chosen by God send their greetings. So over here, he's referring to his own church, uh, wherever he is you know, um, uh, based. It was usually in Ephesus, so it would be one of the Ephesus uh, Ephesian house churches where he would probably have been based. So uh, your sister church is, you know, uh, saying is sending its greetings. So uh, these were all sister churches, and um, um, there would be one person who was who's basically running the place, um, um, you know. So it might have been a lady who is in charge, or like I said. It, it, they're just using the word sister church in the sense of personalizing the local church. So it could be uh, either way. So moving very quickly into third John, uh, we see that the contrast between second John and third John is that in second John, he was warning the church and telling them, do not invite preaching travelers into your home because they are bringing false doctrines. And over here in third John, on the other hand, He's making a request and saying, please, the godly preaching travelers, the ones who are teaching the truth, when they come to your doorstep, do not turn them away. You know, um, give them a warm welcome. They need that support. Without your help and support, they will not be able to do, do the ministry work. So you need to open your doors to them and welcome them. OK, so you have the contrast over here. In Second John, he's saying, you know, be very careful whom you're opening your doors to. Do not welcome them, Do not even greet them, um, because then it will be like as if you're participating in their wicked work is the word of warning he gives in Second John. The third John, it's in third John, it's just the opposite because now he's referring to preaching travelers who are actually preaching the truth. And he says they need you, they're dependent on you. So, you know, it is good for you to welcome them. So, we see the contrast between these two letters. So, we will be discussing that um, in greater detail now. I think someone raised a hand. Yeah, if so, yes, Pastor, it was me. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, yeah. I, I just wanted to ask that. Uh, how do we um, how do we um, make people understand that both second the second book of John and third letter of John was actually written by John himself? Um, there's some circles of Christians that uh, propagate that they were written by elders. Um, I don't know if you could throw more light on that misconception, if it is, or if the elder is referring to John himself. Yeah, we very briefly looked at that in the introduction when we spoke about, uh, you know, um, 
just before we started off on first john when we had the introduction we looked at some of the things uh, which make us say that second and third john have been uh, written by john himself um talking about the similarity in language and um uh, you know i don't really remember now any more the things which i spoke about in the introduction but that was very very brief if you would like greater detail uh, oh my you know some of the commentaries can get into really great detail um i can look through the commentaries that i have with me and then maybe i can post some of those you know in the in the, in the stream page I'm so sorry. It is connection just goes. Yeah, I'm so sorry uh, for that. The connection kind of went off. So yes, uh, the authorship of Second John and Third John. Um, so there are commentaries which talk about uh, the uh, grammatical usage. They also talk about the expressions, you know, John's emphasis on love, uh, he, about walking in the truth. Uh, so they they pick up on all these things and they say because of these similarities, uh, it is John who has uh, written it. And they also say that he simply refers to himself as uh, elder because he was so well known in that entire region, you know, because he was based in Ephesus. And from there, he would travel from place to place, uh, you know, um, uh, encouraging the churches and building them up. And also, uh, uh, because he was, uh, because he became very well known, he no longer needed to use his name. So he would just simply refer to himself as uh, the elder, you know, rather than saying calling himself the apostle and boasting about his position. He kind of was more humble in just simply referring to himself as the elder, and that is how he was known. And uh, uh, there are uh, these people, right? I don't remember anymore their names, uh, but it was there in the introduction. Uh, you know, people like Irenaeus and some others who specifically say, you know, referred to these letters and said, John wrote them, you know, so they kind of make a reference to that. So those things were also part of the introduction. And I mentioned a little bit of that in the introduction. I didn't get, get into too much detail, but if you are interested, there are commentaries which discuss these things in great detail. Um, they will, in fact, list out all the people who mention, uh, you know, uh, saying that John is the one who wrote that, you know, from those ancient, you know, those ancient writings, uh, all these early historians and all of that. Uh, so all those people who actually mentioned saying John is the one who said so and so, 
you know in in this letter or that, or that letter so then they use those references to say that there are ancient writers who are backing up the fact that john is the one who authored these things so um um uh, i had very briefly touched upon that in the intro uh, session that we had uh, so you could maybe refer to that uh, but uh, for more details i could you know um, uh, put up a couple of uh, commentaries which have good introductions for this uh, for this particular aspect i can put that in the stream page and you, and you can just check it out so maybe by uh, evening i should be able to put that in the stream page thank All you right. pastor yeah yeah uh yes so we've uh, stepped into the john now and um yeah so it's written to a person named gaius i have no idea how to pronounce his name <laughs> so that's just that's just my pronunciation uh so this letter does not have much theological content or anything uh it's mainly um you know three things that are being said first uh it, john praises him for the um for the for the love that he has shown for the hospitality that he has shown to the traveling preachers uh, to the missionaries who are coming to his doorstep then second he talks about uh, somebody named diotrephes who is not showing hospitality and in fact is being very very hostile towards the missionaries you know the true missionaries who are coming and third um, there's a um, he kind of recommends somebody named demetrius so it's basically these three things that happen in this very brief letter uh, so um, again uh, just like in the previous letter we see that he begins by saying uh, to my dear friend guys whom i love in the truth okay so uh, the emphasis is always on uh, them being in the truth as against the fake teachers and the fake uh, believers you know no, no, you would, you would not call them believers the fake christians who consider themselves as being in the truth but are actually not in the truth okay, so um there's some debate on who this gaius is uh, because there are two gaiuses mentioned in our new testament uh, the first one would be the person mentioned in acts 19 29 and acts 24 in these two places uh there's this person named gaius who's from a place called derby um that would be in the region of galatia okay so uh that person who is from the region of galatia from a particular city called derby he was a traveling companion of paul so when paul would go on his missionary journeys this person would also accompany him so is john writing to that gaius maybe maybe not we do not know this is another guy is also mentioned in the uh, new testament that would be the person mentioned in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 14 and also romans 16 23 now this guy is does not belong to the region of galatia rather he lives in corinth and this person uh, paul says he's one of the few people whom i personally baptized okay so uh, um this gaius also uh, um he he stays in uh, in 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 this gaius house on one occasion so uh, gaius is his host in corinth when he is staying over there so um so which gaius is being addressed over here we do not know it could be somebody else altogether i mean after all gaius was a common name in those days so it could be one of these two gaiuses or it could be somebody else that is being referred to in this letter the details of course are not given to us um we don't get the impression that this man is uh, the head of the house church or anything uh, uh but it's probably his house in which the church is meeting because he's the one who is being you know who's being opening his doors and offering the hospitality to the missionaries who are coming so he probably is the one who owns that house and the church runs in his you know in in his premises um coming to the verses uh, verse 2 which of course would be a general greeting uh, if someone could read out that uh, verse 2 can you read that go ahead beloved i pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health 
as it goes well with your soul yes so um, again this is a general form of greeting uh, that was um, you know used in the letters of that time it was considered polite uh, to you know make a reference to the person's health and wish them good health uh, so he does that but again over here but, uh, even as he's doing that he adds something extra to it so he says i pray that you may enjoy good health uh, and that all may go well with you and then he adds this extra phrase uh, where he says even as your soul is getting along well so um, he's referring to the fact that gaius is doing very very well in his internal uh, you know uh, condition uh, in the in the way he is living his life uh, in the way he is following the truth you know in the way he is expressing the love of christ uh, towards the people who are coming to his door so in all of those things his soul is doing very very well um, whenever john mainly uses this particular word the greek word would be suke so wherever john generally uses the word suke he usually is just talking about you know uh, the normal natural human life um, to use an example Uh, if we could actually go there and read that John chapter ten verse eleven, if someone could read out John chapter ten verse eleven. I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Okay, so the good shepherd shepherd lays down his suke for the sheep. it just basically means you know your life you lay down your life uh, so usually whenever john uses this word suke that's all he's talking about he's just talking about the natural life but on a few occasions uh, john uses this word uh, suke in a in a uh, to talk about the inside the internal soul um one example of that would be uh, john 12 27 So, if you could please read out John twelve twenty seven. Could someone please? Yeah. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Okay. But so, for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Yeah. So here, uh, Jesus says, "Now my suke is troubled." Okay. So over here, it's obviously not talking about just the natural life. It's talking about the internal emotions, the will, and the emotions, uh, and the mind. So um, uh, over here, uh, Gaius is, uh, you know, over here, John is referring to uh, the internal soul, and so he says, "Your soul is doing well." the way you are living your life is good and so in the same way may your health your external health also may that also go well is what he is saying and um, then he goes on to explain what does he mean by your soul is doing well how is his soul doing well that gets explained in verse 3 if someone could read out verses 3 and 4 for by For I will rejoice greatly when the brothers come, came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Yes. So it's he says uh, it gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth. So in what sense is his is Gaius' soul doing very very well? he is being faithful to the truth and uh, um uh, so he is and also it says over here uh, yeah he says uh, it gives me great joy to hear that my children are walking in the uh, truth so this man is not only holding on to the correct doctrine he is also continuing continuing in the correct action so his his uh, doctrine is correct and his actions also are correct how are his actions correct he is willing to open his doors 
to complete strangers whom he has never met before, but he's willing to do that for them because they're coming in the name of the Lord and they are doing, you know, the Lord's ministry. So even though he does not even know them, he is willing to open his doors to them. Um, and um, uh, so in verse 5, uh, he says, John says, Dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. Okay, so um, now, uh, you know, he goes on next to talk about, uh, you know, Diotrephes, who is not showing hospitality. So it's likely that maybe the people, uh, they probably went to Diotrephes uh, first because he seems to have some kind of leadership position in the church. Uh, but Diotrephes was refusing to offer them hospitality. So it's likely that, you know, when they, ref when they, were, when they were turned away by Diotrephes, maybe they came over here to Gaius' doorstep and Gaius was willing to take them in. And uh, so he says, yeah, even though they are strangers to you, you are willing to take them in. You were not like this Diotrephes who refused to take in the, um, the, the missionaries into his home. Um, uh, if someone could read out verse 6, please. Who testified to your love before the church, you will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. Okay, so um, the, the these people who have been helped by Gaius, when they finally went back home, they told their house church about how they had been treated by Gaius. And uh, when, when John heard about this, he was very, very happy. And uh, so, um, uh, so what would happen is that when you have um, these traveling preachers going from location to location, when they would go back home, they would obviously carry information with them about how they were treated in different places. So they would obviously tell that, you know, in so-and-so place, that church, you know, opened its doors. It welcomed us. It showed us the love of Christ. So they would share that information. Uh, and uh, so uh, it would create a good impression, uh, you know, regarding that church. And also the church back home would, would feel that, okay, these other churches are standing with them. They care about them. And, you know, it kind of builds up that sense of community. So you see, when we look at the previous letter, um, what if the church had opened its doors to the wrong kind of people? Again, you know, it would create that uh, sense of, um, you know, um, either you're showing, showing a sense of unity with those people or you're showing a, a, making a clear declaration and saying we are not part of this. So it's all very, very interlinked. These early communities, they were so linked to one another. Uh, how you would treat their people, how you would treat their preachers would send out a declaration to everyone else who's watching. So you're either making a statement, yes, we are one with you. We believe in what you believe in. Or you're very clearly declaring and saying, no, we are not part of this. You are different. We are different. You know, so stay away because you carry the wrong doctrine. So there's a very clear message being sent here. Um, the 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 church has gone. I mean, the, the, these missionaries have gone back and made a report. Only thing, of course, in this case, it's a it's a good report, and uh, John is happy that he's you know that that uh, Gaius has received these people with love, and he gives a word of advice and says, please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. Now, we're not very sure what this means. He could be saying, provide them with the finances that they would need, you know, to uh, for their return journey. Uh, because in those days, traveling cost money. I mean, uh, you know, the, they didn't have very uh, easy, inexpensive forms of transport. So they would have to make arrangements for their travel. They would have to stay in different places as they are, you know, returning back. Uh, so they would have, need to have money in their hand for all of that. So maybe he means when you're sending them away, you know, send them with enough for them to be able to go on to their next location comfortably. Or it could also mean when they are going, please write out a nice you know, letter of recommendation for them 
so that when the to the when they go to the next place to the next church that church will will see your letter of recommendation and be willing to receive them in and why are, why do you need to do all of these things because in verse 7 and 8 it says it was for the sake of the name that they went out receiving no help from the pagans we ought therefore to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth so if they go to the doorstep of some person who is not a christian that person will not even care about them and if they go to a public inn or a public lodging place this very it's very dangerous they may get robbed they may get killed uh, so nobody is going to come to their help but they are doing it for the name for the sake of the name for jesus christ and so uh, we who are part of the faith he says we should show hospitality to them even though they are strangers to us we must be willing to take them into our homes and when we do that we are actually working together for the truth he says uh, you know um among the giftings if you remember among the you know giftings which are listed hospitality is one of the giftings which are uh, you know mentioned and um, people you know have a lot of uh, praise for apostles and teachers and prophets but nobody is you know speaks much praise uh, for those involved in the you know, hospitality gifting but imagine i mean um, if those people would were not showing the hospitality that they were showing the great commission would not even have been accomplished because these people who were trying to fulfill the great commission going from town to town uh, they were depending on the people with hospitality gifting so the people who have other giftings you know other than the main popular ones they also are contributing just as much to the great commission so that's something that we must actually recognize and value instead of you know reserving our praise and our regard for only those handful who walk up in the front and do something which can be seen by everyone maybe we should also realize uh, how much is being contributed by the people with other giftings who are also doing their part in making the great commission happen so the person who is you know involved in hospitality is uh, will be rewarded just as greatly as the person who's maybe being an apostle and planting churches uh, so um, in god size uh, these people are also working together for the truth uh, just as much as the uh, you know the missionaries who are actually going around planting the churches so uh, we see these truths coming across um uh, another thing just to know uh, to talk about how they were not uh, receiving any help from pagans uh, like i said uh, if a stranger goes to a new place um, the local law over there you know the local law agency over there is not going to give him any kind of protection so uh, in case there is anything you know any in any issues involved uh, the people who have taken that person into their home they are the ones who will speak up for that person they will uh, you know may see to it that legal redress is you know uh, uh, offered uh, so they are the ones who would speak up for that person uh, because the stranger on his own has no legal rights in a uh, in another you know in another uh, foreign town because i mean he's not a local from there it sounds very strange because today i mean it doesn't matter whether you know, i'm staying over here in my house in bangalore or whether i go and book myself in a hotel in uh, mumbai even in mumbai i would be treated as a citizen i would have all my legal rights i can go to the nearest police station if something happens and i will be heard you know my my uh, my fir will be filed all of that but uh, back then uh, these your uh, towns and cities would function like independent units i mean unless you're a really important personality and you know with an with an official uh, you know designation nobody would take you seriously the local uh, law bodies would not even you know uh, care if you have lost all your you know possessions and you're in a bad situation so that is why uh, he says over here the pagans will definitely not help them we are the ones who have to open up our doors to these missionaries who are trying to you know fulfill the great commission by visiting place and going from place to place you know sharing the word of god and so after having said these things he comes to verse 9 where he is talking about this person named 
uh, diode reefs. If someone could read out verse 9, please. I have written something to the church. The diatrophist who likes to put himself first does not acknowledge our authority. Yeah, he, he says over here that he has actually written to the church which probably means you know it's the same house church which Gaius also attends. He says, I have written, but this person, Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. Um, so we see that Diotrephes over here is opposing the missionaries and not allowing them to you know, come and stay in their homes uh, because he is a person who loves to be first. So we don't really know why he is actually so against uh, opening his doors to the missionaries. Is it because he has gone into Gnosticism and now he's kind of opposed to the church? It could be that, uh, but then it looks like he's still very much part of this community. So maybe it's not really the Gnosticism. Maybe the reason why he is not willing to take in new people is because he loves to be first. You see, that seems to be a more likely reason. Uh, he doesn't want competition. He feels threatened when you have traveling missionaries coming in and sharing the word. And you know, maybe they have excellent uh, you know, speaking skills. And they are ministering in power. And uh, people are, admire what they are doing. And they praise them. And Diophtrius does not like that. He wants to be first. He wants to be the one person on the pedestal who's always admired and looked up to, and he doesn't want any kind of competition. So it looks like that's the reason why he is not encouraging anyone else to come. It's like as if he is saying, I'm the only one who knows the correct truth. I'm the only one who can tell you the correct things. So you have to listen to me. You know, Don't listen to others. Um, and he's kind of shutting out ministry work. Uh, because of his desire to be first. So we see a very dangerous attitude here in Diotrephes. And we see that you know, in, in, in a lot of people, even in our you know, uh, modern church. So it is something that we need to watch out for. Um, it is a church must be careful uh, with the kind of people that they invite you know, to their church. Uh, to stand at the pulpit and preach. So yes, we must be careful to see that the right doctrine is shared. Uh, but at the same time, a church should always be open uh, for other ministers of God to come and you know um, um, to to be able to impart, uh, to be able to you know pray over people. Uh, so these are things that uh, no church should be so closed that it doesn't allow other people to impart because we are one body of Christ. Uh, so we are all supposed to be partners in the ministry. And sometimes uh, God will send us people from other places, you know, to minister into our lives. So yes, as a church, we are very careful whom we place on the stage and whom we allow, you know, to minister into our lives. But at the same time, we are we must always be careful that we are open to what God is bringing us through other people. We must not be exclusivist, where we say that we are the only correct church. We have the only right teaching. We refuse to allow anyone else inside. Uh, you know, we refuse to um, accept and be part of the larger body of Christ. So that kind of an attitude is wrong. Diotrephes seems to be seems to have exercised that kind of an attitude. So John is saying, I wrote to the church, you know, he, uh, the missionaries that he sent out, he sent them out with a letter of recommendation saying, you know, please, you know, give them shelter. They are from, they are from us. They are good people. They have the correct doctrine. So please open your doors to them, you know, and give them shelter. So it's actually written to the church, a letter of recommendation and sent it with these people, but these people have not been welcomed. And then he goes on to give more details about the way Diotrephes has been treating them. Um, if we could read out verse 10, if someone could read out, please, verse 10. So if I come, I'll bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. 
not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who wants to put them out of the church. Okay, so uh, this person is speaking in a malicious, wrong manner about John and the missionaries that he is sending out. He's speaking against them. Uh, he himself refuses to wel welcome the believers. He refuses to open his own doors you know, to them. But he's going one step further and he's even telling the other members of the church not to open their doors to, the, to these missionaries. In fact, he is taking action against them. So if someone is welcoming someone into their home and you know putting them up, uh, he is in fact uh, having them excommunicated from the church which means that this man had some level of influence in that congregation. Otherwise, he could not have gotten away with it, right? So he's somebody that the people looked up to, somebody that the people respected. And uh, so he, in fact, had the authority to have someone excommunicated if they choose to you know, entertain um, missionaries that he is not approving of. And uh, that's a rather, um, uh, you know, aggressive way to use his leadership position because if you notice in the previous letter second john uh, even though john says to the believers you know do not open your doors to false teachers he never ever says if you do that i will excommunicate you i'll have you thrown out of the church even john with the authority that he holds never does that never says those things but look at diotrephes over here he is using his um, you know uh, authority in the church uh, to go to the extent of dictating what they should do and he's having them thrown out of the church if they refuse to comply with whatever he is saying. So it looks like this man um, is in a position of power, but he is abusing his authority. And so John says, when I come, I'll deal with this. Um, someone needs to publicly speak up and rebuke this man and make it very clear to the entire congregation that what he is doing is wrong. Because if he's left alone, he'll continue doing what he's doing. And the congregation will actually think, oh, OK, maybe this is OK. You know, maybe maybe what Diotrephes is saying is uh, correct. And maybe we should become an exclusivist house church, which refuses to open our doors to anyone else. And, you know, who doesn't know who, you know, and, and we will not participate in the Great Commission, not partner with other people, help them, assist them. You know, so they would get the wrong impression about the whole uh, um, missionary endeavor. And so he says, John says, when I come, I will deal with this. I will call attention to what he is doing because someone has to rebuke him publicly. And it should be made very, very clear that this kind of an attitude, you know, um, is not to be tolerated. And like we know, these letters were always distributed, you know, they were uh, after it would be read, read out in this particular church, it would be sent to another church and the other church would also get to read it. And then it would be passed on to the other congregations. So everyone would get to know the correct way to behave with uh, with um, traveling missionaries and uh, the, the wrong way to approach the whole thing. So these matters, these very practical matters would be made very clear through these letters which John is sending out. OK, so um, so so we get to know uh, that the attitude that Diotrephes has adopted over here is clearly the wrong one. Um, you are not supposed to use your uh, leadership position to uh, throw people out of the church uh, just because they are not complying with your wishes. There are, uh, you know, um, there are valid uh, you know, factors mentioned you know in, in other parts of the new testament where yes you would have to excommunicate a believer and you know send them out at least temporarily until they have been disciplined and corrected uh, but this this is just a, you know um, a, a minor issue uh, especially because these people who are coming to the doorstep are true missionaries uh, who so diotrephes never says that they have wrong doctrine all he seems to be saying is, no, we should keep them out because he wants to be first. Uh, so it's a very, very wrong attitude. And uh, so John you know, speaks up against it. Now we come to the very last portion, which is you know, verses 11 and 12, where he is now making a request. So there seems to be this person, Demetrius. And it looks like as if you know he's saying, 
Demetrius is coming now with this letter to you. Please open your door to him. Don't be like Diotrephes, but rather open your door to him and allow him to stay over here because he's a good person. So it's like a letter of recommendation that is now being, uh, you know, given to Gaius. If someone could read out verses eleven and twelve. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that does good is of God. But he that does evil hath not seen God. Demetrius hath good report of all men and of the truth itself. Yeah, and we also bear record, and you know that our record is true. Okay, so um, in verse eleven, John says, "Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God." So you know he's saying this Diotrephes, uh, who is doing evil, who is working against the gospel. Looks like as if he's a person who has not seen God. Uh, it's like as if he has not really caught the truths which which Jesus has been teaching. So do not be like that. Rather do what is good. And what is the one good thing which you can do immediately right now? It's regarding Demetrius. Demetrius is someone who is spoken of well by everyone. Everyone says, everyone acknowledges that this is a man who has been walking in the truth. The truth itself acknowledges that he is, you know, that he is good in the sense he is somebody who has been following the truth and practicing it. So, therefore, you know, um, uh, you he is someone that you can trust. So, it seems to be he seems to be indicating that Demetrius is the one who is going to be coming, holding this letter in his hand. And when Gaius reads this, he should welcome Demetrius into his home. He should not be like Diotrephes, who is opposing the believers. And when um, John comes along, he will take action against Diotrephes. So that's the basic essence that we get from these um, uh, verses. Um, so we come finally to the last portion. And if uh, if, we, if someone could just read out verses 13 and 14. Yeah. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace be to you, the friends greet you. Greet the friends, each by name. OK, so um, we have the usual uh, you know, uh, closing uh, remarks being made. But then again, there's something additional added over here. And this is what John says. The friends here send their greetings. Uh, so the term that he uses is the friends over here are sending their greetings. And then he says, greet the friends there by name. Uh, so this is uh, not a very common term that is generally used. But maybe these believers at the early church were calling themselves the friends in the sense, you know, uh, Jesus had said, right, that you are no longer slaves. Now I regard you as friends. And uh, so um, uh, here we have, uh, you know, John using that phrase. And so maybe, maybe in the early church, you know, the believers used to refer to themselves as the friends, you know, the friends of God, uh, the ones who had been specially chosen by the Lord to be his friends. So he says, the friends over here are sending their greetings. And so, you know, greet the friends who are there in that church. Uh, so he ends on that note. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, whatever we could draw out of these letters. I have tried to convey that. Um, so some of it has been a bit repetitive. I know I'm very sorry for that. Uh, but uh, I hope that you know the main points have come across. So we are kind of done. Anyone has any questions? Uh, otherwise, we can you know, just close with a word of prayer. Can I ask? Oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you were teaching in the first session, you were teaching about Gnostics. So um, mm -hmm. keeping that in mind in today's current world, like, could you help us uh, recognize, like, are there any, uh, uh, like, Jehovah Witness or can we call them doing the same thing or are there any other significant preachers or people or some groups that are uh, following wrong doctrines? Like, could you just uh, help us uh, know a few in the current scenario, I yeah, I mean, I only know the familiar ones that you know are there in our um, 
in our in you know indian setup uh there may be others in other regions if you were to go to the internet and if, if you were to type wrong uh, cults or something like that you you would get an entire list of all kinds of wrong cults which are out there currently so that would be a very detailed list but then yeah the ones that we encounter in our own circles are uh, of course the jehova witnesses simply because they tend to come to our doorstep you know uh, with their teachings so we have encounters with them um and yeah their their belief of course is that uh, you know uh, jehova is god but uh, jesus on the other hand is a created being and he is not divine so yeah we come across jehova witnesses uh, we have uh, the you know uh, seventh day adventists um who would prefer to have their uh, church service on saturdays most of the teachings are quite all right uh, but there are some one or two things which they say which don't quite gel with scripture um we have i mean uh, i know a lot of orthodox um you know churches which um they call themselves orthodox but then they have a they worship ancestors and things like that i don't really want to name any churches you know because i mean um, we have students who come from all backgrounds and they are all you know doing their best to find out the truth and learn uh, from the scriptures so you know i don't want to just simply name any church and then you know brand them as all uh, pagans because even in those churches there are so many who are you know um trying to find out the truth by going to the scriptures attending courses you know learning online and so i do want to pick any names uh it's all but, right i understand yeah, not a yeah, problem so, it's yes. fine thank you yeah uh, so the, the the main thing is that we can't help the church that we are born into we can't help it if you know our entire family attends a particular church uh, we we are part of it because we are part of that social setup but then we as individuals because we have a hunger for god we love him you know we we do our best to dig into the scriptures and find out for ourselves what is the truth and uh, so um we everything that our our uh, you know our um, local churches Uh, our uh, the churches to which we are affiliated even though they may not follow all the correct teachings uh, we try from our side uh, you know to follow the truth and uh, maybe share that with other congregation members so that they too will know the correct uh, you know doctrine and not be led away uh, so yeah it's difficult to just simply say uh, you know oh this denomination because i know some people who are in that denomination who are following the truth and i cannot just you know lump them with the others who are not following the truth yeah so we'll just leave it at that uh, yes i uh, all right yeah um anything else that anyone wants to uh, you know bring up uh, we have 2 minutes otherwise we can close with a word of prayer yeah let's just close with a word of prayer lord we just thank you so much for all the things that we could uh, you know cover in second john and third john and in fact lord um, uh, the gospel of john as well thank you for being with us even as we went through this entire course thank you for all the lessons that we could learn oh lord please help us to apply these things in our own lives and help us a lot to grow lord uh even as uh, these two letters touched upon wrong doctrines right doctrines lord i pray that you would help us to be sensitive to your leading i pray that we will always be students of your word who really take your word seriously study it uh look into it when we are taught things from the pulpit we would be like the berians who went back to the scriptures to see whether 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 what was being taught from the pulpit was actually in line with scripture or not help us to be serious students of the word o oh lord so that we will not be led astray by false teachers but that lord we will be able to hold on to the truth and uh, be able to walk in it and therefore have god because those who have the truth have the father and the son and those who are led away they do not even have the lord and that would be such a dangerous state for us to be in oh lord 
So I pray that you would help us to always remain serious, uh, disciplined students of the word who will hold on to the truth and test everything that is taught so that we will know whether it lines up with your word or not. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, those of you who are still working on the assessments, please, uh, you know, finish it by 25th because that would be the last date. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.